Hello everyone, welcome to the official YouTube channel of Department of Business Economics, also known as DBE. I am Palak Jain, a placement coordinator at DBE, and I am excited to kickstart this new series called Alum Spotlight 2.0, where we talk to our esteemed alumni about their experience and journey after completing their MBA from DBE. So for our very uh, first episode, we have a special guest, Ms. Nikita Manocha, who was from the batch of 2019. She is currently working with Accenture as a management consulting analyst. We are extremely happy to have you here, ma'am. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. So, uh, ma'am, I wanted to ask you certain questions that would help our uh, batch and our students at DBE. So let's start. Yeah. Um, so my first question is, uh, now that you are working as a management consulting analyst, uh, it is one of the most sought after roles. So can you give us some insights about how an actual day at your work looks like? Sure. So uh, I did not get placed into this role right after college. Uh, it's something I switched uh, to after working with Barclays for almost two and a half years. Um, so. As it is, it's like one of the consulting roles, uh, but it's not as glitzy and glamorous as you think it might be. Uh, it depends from day to day and from the projects that you take on uh, while you're a part of, uh, you know, uh, whichever project you take on, it depends on how hectic it is. So rather than me telling you how a day of mine looks like, I'll just tell you what all we kind of do. and. It might look like that for you guys going forward. So Accenture strategy is well known for its consulting. So I'm a part of the strategy and consulting global network. And um, I'm particularly working in the finance and risk uh, practice of, of the company where we're majorly dealing with banking and financial services clients and helping them in a variety of their uh, issues that they come up uh, to us with, whether it be in the field of operational risk, credit risk, market risk, uh, risk modeling, risk, you know, uh, scoring models, anything. So anything that comes up to us as part of the project uh, is taken on by us. We have a pool of skilled people across all these fields who are looking into it and we are accordingly. And we honestly, as consultants, we give interviews uh, to get on to a particular project. So it's not that, you know, our interview phase gets over like any project we take on it. Uh, you need to interview for it. You need to see whether you're eligible. You have those required skill sets that the client is looking for. And then you get on board into a project. And then depending on the length of the project, we are kind of on to it for quite some time. And uh, then you roll off, you can be on the bench. But the good part of consulting, at least what I've seen so far is even when you're on the bench, you have a lot of things to do. So you work on proposals, which are something like client pitches. And you're trying to gather more clients uh, to who, with whom you can work. And that's where you start leveraging your network, where you can actually talk to your existing clients, understand if they have more work, where you see you have an in with the required skill sets they want and use those networking skills to try and get those projects to your team. And that really helps you that, you know, helps in your career trajectory. So it's not just working on the project, but it's a lot about how you can manage to get projects to yourself, to your practice and get people on board and help in the account development. And apart from just this, right, you know, just client um, pitches, you also get to write white papers on a lot of uh, topics which are emerging in the field of finance and risk, whether it be AI, ML, which are the hot topics uh, these days or any other um, growing climate risk, for example, is a very booming field. ESG, we've been really looking into those things. So you have your project, you have your uh, you have your client pitches, your proposals that you work on, and you also have a chance to build your understanding by actually working on these white papers and, you know, any other documents that might uh, require all this. So I think consulting is fun till it is. Uh, I let you know when it doesn't stay fun, but yeah, it, it's been good till now. Okay. Uh, nice to hear that, ma'am. So coming to the next question, 
from a senior risk analyst role at Barclays to your current position as as a management uh, consulting analyst at Accenture, how has your work evolved, and what are the notable differences that you've experienced? Okay, I think uh, a bit of it is the fact that you know when you're working. It's like I've gone from being the client to working for a client. So, um, Barclays, for example, would have been one of the kind of clients that we in Accenture target, you know, for there. And um, I, I mean, Barclays does reach out to consultants and consulting companies for a lot of um, work around finance, risk, everything. But uh, what I realized um, in the very small sense, so I, I I won't say that I have so much experience to tell you everything and be very and just try and make up facts but when i was working in barclays i just thought that i'm doing one piece of work for quite some time and i'm just looking into that and something a little more around it uh, on an ad hoc basis or some, just some a little more diversification from there but the good thing which i've noticed while i'm here in accenture is that you're not bound by one particular project so right now for example if i'm working in the field of operational risk right now with a project I'm going to get, uh, you know, sooner or later, I'll be off this project and trying to get onto a new one. And there are opportunities in the field of liquidity risk, asset liability management, there's opportunities in the field of ESG, there's opportunities in the uh, field of credit modeling. And you may not have those experiences, but I think Accenture or any other consulting company for that matter does provide you with all those uh, skill sets they train you continuously while you're at the company to go gather those skill sets to work for your clients because it's very important not everyone will have all the skill sets that you know your clients require you need to have like diverse set of them so it's only when you start working on a particular project you gather that experience and then you get on to the new one so in a way in one job i'm getting to work on a lot so i'm getting that entire risk uh, you know enterprise risk management uh, experience than I would have say at a particular bank or any other financial company where I'm working in one role then you'll have to try and find another role in that company to work on something else so that's the kind of diversification I've seen in consulting it can get more hectic it's not very glossy when you just think of it because now when I'm going to another field I don't know about it so I have to learn so much before I can even interview with the client so it gets difficult, but then if you manage to do it, you're just getting to learn a lot more from it. So that's that's the shift I've seen when I moved from, you know, say Barclays to um, Accenture. Okay. Uh, so the next uh, question that I want to ask you is that since you've been working uh, in the industry for quite some time now, what tools or skill sets do you think are the most important for any kind hmm. of So. You know, everyone will say you should know AI, ML, you should know the uh, R, Python, everything. Agreed. They are very important. That's what you need in your work to kind of, you know, I mean, that's what you need to work on when you're doing something. But you need to know the basics of what you're doing unless and until you don't have that clarity of what the what's the end target of the work you want. That skill set of just having a tool in your, uh, uh, you know, in your uh, pocket doesn't really help you need to know what you're working on so i, I just feel that rather uh, not just focusing only on tools and technologies that a lot of focus also needs to stay on what we learn in college i know it sounds very uh, wrong when a person like me will just come and say you know you know you should focus on college but at least in my current role i have seen uh, application of what i learned in college uh, in my work right now because that subject matter understanding when you're communicating with a lot of stakeholders in your project you need to know what you're talking about you need to understand the problem statement first to actually start building a solution on it and if you don't know that problem statement if you don't understand the background behind it then it becomes even more difficult then you will have to go back and read right and that will take a lot of time so you need to focus on having that particular skill set of uh, that particular knowledge base to have uh, to you know build upon and to work on tools technologies going forward but yes uh, and i think uh, this is one of the questions you posed to me and maybe i'll answer it right now especially in the banking and financial sector now what we're seeing is a major shift to the use of ai and ml i think by the by now you guys would have had n number of conversations on ai ml i don't need to explain what it is but we are seeing a major shift because banking and financial services sector needs it, but it's not adopted it very well. 
so they're reaching out to consultants like us or any other company that they might reach out to to help them you know work on this skill set and help them in their different uh, requirements so um, and i think i'll answer this you don't need to uh, ask me this question later but you did ask me a question on how ai ml is uh, you know used uh, in your current day to day work and i'll give a very very small example if you want to go for fraud detection in your company ml would in a way understand behaviors and patterns of the kind of anomaly behavior you end up seeing right so that's kind of a tool which is actually being being built by banks to understand anomalies uh, you know behavioral differences in say a particular customer interacts with the bank and be able to detect fraud without really that level of manual intervention so that kind of ml is really helping banks to really cut short whatever firstly the people required to do this and also catch it on a more real time basis so that's a very good application and number of applications our company for that matter like my team is working on you know these financial bots who provide uh, advice financial services advising um, and everything through actually bots there you don't really need to talk to a human so if someone wants some financial services query some financial advice you pick up a call with the bank they can redirect you to a bot that will help you answer questions based on the queries you you know keep on raising so that's one project that's probably going on in my company so i think banking has a huge uh, white space for um, it is obviously being addressed everyone is working on that but i think uh, compared to other sectors banking and financial services where i'm working has a huge space for ai and ml and those people uh, and what our college teachers and you guys are learning through n number of interactions i think if you build that skill set it will really help you guys going forward to work for either the company or somewhere else helping those companies uh you know build and leverage these uh required uh, skill sets thank you so much for sharing those insights ma'am uh, so coming to the next question so you've cleared both the levels of frm so heartiest congrats congratulations on that ma'am would you like to share your experience regarding this so that students who are thinking of appearing for these exams can have a better insight about it yeah i might not be catering to a very large chunk of people because i don't think everyone wants to go for an frm but yes um i didn't know i needed an frm until i started working honestly when i was in college i didn't look into any other people were doing cfa i don't think anyone was doing frm when we were uh, when i was in college but uh, one way frm really helped me was that i got my accenture job because of uh, uh because of the fact that i cleared frm level 1 agreed i was working with a financial services company direct work relation but that enhanced or that extra skill set that i had of you know clearing frm level 1 really that was one of the qualifications that helped me uh get this job so agreed frm gives you a lot of knowledge you learn a lot but it really does help you when you're looking out for roles at least in my field in financial uh, you know financial services or risk management it really does give you that edge when the you know recruiters are looking out for profile they if they see say an frm or a cfa on your profile along with your mba it does help i i saw it when i was working so i took up frm because i was working in the field of risk i joined barclays i was working in the risk information services department then i moved into impairment forecasting everything associated with risk management for the bank so it was a direct uh, you, you know a uh, course uh, path for me to just pick on frm and uh, enhance my skill sets learn more about it and then it kind of the more i started reading it and i honestly cleared my interviews also with accenture because i read stuff in you know the frm books and stuff so i think it's a very important skill set but it again depends on what people want to do i mean not everyone would want to work in risk management and i'm sure not everyone in our college is working you know is uh, kind of wanting to work on that side of uh, things so i'll say if you end up working i i think you should go about it as things come finish college see where you land up where you start enjoying work and once you see you're working in a particular field you start enjoying that work then try and find the next course of action to build on your current knowledge and that's what i did with frm and it, and it helped so that that was good yeah okay and uh, coming to the next question so in what ways has pursuing an mba from department of business economics uh, been helpful in shaping your career 
it got me my first job <laughs> firstly and <laughs> then everything followed course uh, so i landed up uh, in barclays with the, uh, in you know again the field of risk and everything so far beyond that whether it be frm or whether it be consulting in the field of finance and risk has been right after mba but yes as i mentioned uh, in my current role in fact in my current project i am uh using a few skill sets that i learned in college as well and that's not i i don't know if other mba colleges teach that but eco tricks has been important for me which i thought would be but not to this extent and it ended up being important here so because your projects keep changing and this skill set will come for you sometime or you know sometime or the other going forward and it did and it at least this did time series which we learned in school when i was doing impairment forecasting that was the first most important thing i needed to know while i was working there so i think the the subjects that are being taught to us are very relevant agreed we're studying eco and everything but people who want to go in that field i'm sure you will be using those uh, subjects to your uh, uh, advantage going forward so i think mba yeah it got me my first job i learned a lot and i feel like being a part of few committees over there so i was also part of the alumni relations committee and uh we used to also network when alums used to come or some speakers used to come and i think that goes beyond like even when you're at your job you need to sell yourself right you need, you need to market yourself to reach certain places and that helps all these skill sets is very you know is what you build in mba so that's a, that's a very important thing okay uh would you like to share any incident or experience at your time on campus or something that the current batch must do before graduating from bb on campus i don't know i had a very uh, uh i i didn't have a very eventful <laughs> life in campus but yes when i while i was in campus as i said i was in a few committees you're wearing those black suits even in the summer uh, when you're sweating and everything and but you know everything works because when now when i see my company going out and hiring people from bay you know from b schools itself they're all coming there in their black lace and it creates an impression which i never thought it did i used to wonder why are we doing this but it did it kind of has that impact you need to be you need to present yourself well whether it be through your clothing whether it be through how you speak to people it, it, it's important and i think being a part of so many committees that the college has to offer really gives you that exposure to go and interact with a lot of people but and placement committees a great place to be uh, so is the ARCC i know they're very hectic places to work in but they do end up giving you some skill sets that you can apply later so i think i'll just advise the people who are joining the college or who are already there in their first year to try and be a part of something in the college to use that to your uh, advantage experience uh, certain things take your interviews really seriously take your subject seriously because i think i've spoken about this before in one of my interactions with you guys uh, my my interview with barclays was cleared majorly because uh, of the subjects that were taught in uh, college they asked me everything on everything i was uh, you know that was taught in college and had i not known it i would have been out of the interview so do focus on them you might feel they're not important right now but at least for your interviews abhi ke liye just focus on that and then you know take it as it comes so these are important things you realize it only when you start working and you're going through processes so that's that's my advice be in uh, committees uh interact have, build on those kind of soft skill sets that you need and just focus on the studies there because they do help okay Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing all your insights. I'm sure it will be helpful for all of us, and we yeah. wish you all the best for everything. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.